Now, this keyboard is one product that has a lot of critical acclaim going for it. Typically, when I look at these kinds of products, part of me, that skeptic side in me, has the feeling to say, this product's overrated. This product is just covered in reviews that are just saying it's good just to praise the creator, in this case, Steel Series. The 6G V2 is not one of those products. The 6G V2 is actually a pretty kick-ass keyboard. Of course, it is a mechanical keyboard targeted at pro gamers. It has anti-ghosting, which allows you to pretty much press every key on the keyboard at the same time and allow them to be detected at the same time. It features fantastic build quality, the best compatibility I've actually gotten from a gaming sort of keyboard, and it just the mechanical switches are amazing. I talk about build quality in all of my videos, but that is because it is very important to me. A lot of gaming accessories are made with not the best build quality out there, and the product really suffers because of that. And especially in terms of keyboards, while I haven't had anything really fall apart or break, just the fact that it feels weak or feels pretty flimsy is kind of disappointing. The keyboard that I am upgrading from, the G510 from Logitech, is one of those keyboards where it just it, it has a lot of flex to it, it just doesn't feel very sturdy. So, when I picked up what is considered the heavyweight SteelSeries 6G V2, I was impressed. The keyboard is extremely heavy, it is extremely rugged feeling, made of some of the thickest, hardest plastic I have seen on a keyboard, and it has virtually no flex to it when I try to twist it. I actually tried getting to the point where I would twist it to pop some keys off, and the thing would barely budge at all. One of the great things about it is that it has four very wide, covering a lot of surface area, slip grips on the bottom of the keyboard to prevent it from sliding no matter how hard your gaming hands are pushing on the keyboard. Seems logical, and after my review of Logitech's G13 game board, you would think most products, gaming products came with that, that's not the case. In fact, most keyboards I have used have this tiny little strip of slip grip that basically doesn't work. You get the tiniest bit of dust on it and the thing goes flying across your desk. With the G 6G V2, I have done everything I can to push it across my desk, even when it's sitting on top of my desk calendar, which is paper. The weight combined with the slip grips just make it to where it's pretty much impossible to push it across your desk without, you know, kind of running the risk of messing up the rubber gripping. The cable is a very nice length that makes it work for any setup, and it's very thick, so it's not going to feel like it's going to break or pinch or kink. However, that also comes with a downside in that, in my experience, the it is you know it's wrapped up when it comes in shipping, which every cable is and should be, um, but the plastic and the copper inside the cord are thick enough that it doesn't like to unbend once it's been bent long enough. And so instead of having just a nice cord growing across my setup for a couple weeks, I had it to where it was, you know, pointing in different directions because the bins refused to unbend. Not necessarily a long-term problem, but a minor thing that bothered me nonetheless. The entire keyboard is made of a thick, rugged plastic with a very nice, almost rough-ish texture to it, which prevents any sort of fingerprinting or even necessarily grease staining, which is something I've had a lot of trouble with in with keyboards in the past. So that was really nice to see. I, a lot of the shiny, soft plastic that a lot of keyboards use just start, you know, you can tell where you type. Don't really see much wear and tear on this one so far, at least in the time that I have used it compared to other keyboards. Form factor wise, it is, it is as, as the picture and the B-roll will show, it is as basic as it comes. It has your letters and your number pad. It is as small as can be while still being a full size keyboard. And this is actually a very great thing. Coming from pretty much any gaming keyboard I've used, but coming from the G510 that I was using, it, it had all those extra keys on the side and this thing was super wide. While the 6G V2 from SteelSeries is actually quite a bit taller from the angle, which I prefer, um, then the G510, it is nowhere near as long simply because it has what it needs to and that it, that's it. And for a gaming setup, you really don't want bulky things kind of getting in your way and taking up too much space on your desk and leading to potential mess ups while playing a game. So that part, really, really great. Love the size of it, love the weight of it. I can sit it where I want it and it's not gonna go anywhere. Fantastic on that front. 
I usually put keyboards and accessories through a compatibility test, but I didn't really see any compatibility issues with the keyboard. It, it supports USB connection, supports PS2 connection, so unless your motherboard doesn't have PS2 and you specifically want to use PS2 for some reason, it's the only incompatibility you're really going to run into. No real software to install, you just plug and play and it works. And one thing that really caught my eye was the fact that if you use their SteelSeries key, which replaces the left Windows key, if you use that to use the media keys, it actually works on plug and play without having to use complex software. And using a lot of gaming keyboards or even just wireless keyboards in general that have the media keys and have their own software, it's pretty hit or miss whether or not that works. With this plug and play basic drivers that Windows picks up on its own, Media keys have worked every time. Windows 8, Windows 7 have not had a single bit of trouble with it. So, huge props on that front, because that is really hard to accomplish, apparently. So how well do the mechanical switches work, and what really is their purpose? Repetitive strain injury is actually very, very common among anyone who uses the computer regularly with repetitive typing motion. This is especially true with gamers, especially those who play like first-person shooters or anything that uses WASD, because your fingers are always locked in on one spot. So not only are you typing, you know, you're hitting the same button, you know, very repetitive motions, your hands are actually locked into a very specific spot. Add that for me on top of having very thin sensitive hands and a lot of joint pain that I just naturally have anyway, and regular typing and things like that, keyboards can actually be almost very, very painful to use. 6GV2, thanks to its mechanical switches, are absolutely amazing. I, when I was younger, I actually used to want one of those old school, because mechanical switches aren't necessarily a new thing, they're just a new thing to want for gaming. Mechanical keyboards are actually how a lot of keyboards used to be. The old, big, bulky keyboards for ancient computers. We had some at my high school, so when I was in high school, I actually wanted one of the, to take one of those keyboards home because it was so much easier to type on. It was loud, it was kind of obnoxious, it was big, but it was so much easier to type on. And so... Cherry MX Red switches make things absolutely amazing for it. They, they're they a bit lighter to touch than the black switches, so it you know you can fly across the keys and type really, really fast, and it doesn't put a whole lot of strain on your finger muscles or, or joints because you're not having to exert hardly any force onto the keyboard to type. Now, this is a good and bad thing, and this is where the different types of switches come into play. You have your black switches, which are just really easy to press down, your red switches, which are very easy to press down and give a little bit of feedback, and then your blue switches take give a lot more tactile feedback to typing. And so I'm actually very, very much looking forward to trying out Cherry MX blue switches on a keyboard as soon as I get the chance and the opportunity presents itself, because I would really like to see how that tactile feedback improves typing. If you're typing a whole lot on the 6G V2, you're going to run into a little bit, at least at first when you're getting into it, you're going to have a ton of typos and you know, maybe even losing track of your fingers because you can type so fast on this thing, but it it works out once you get used to it. But apparently the blue switches give you enough tactile feedback to still give you the benefit of using the switches, but not give, you know, too much freedom. Gaming on this keyboard is a blast. It's a little loud for my videos, so that becomes, I wouldn't say problematic, just kind of there after a while, but if anything, eh whatever it's a keyboard you're gonna hear a keyboard but fingers get to fly across the keys I don't get a whole lot of strain on my fingers using it, it feels really rugged doesn't feel like it's gonna break or wear out anytime soon It's a pretty awesome keyboard so I kinda have a two-part recommendation for this keyboard in that I recommend it for gamers as well as for those who frankly have a lot of stress on your hands while typing it works out for both. It's great for gaming. The anti-ghosting just works amazing. The keyboard is a great length. It's dur durable, rugged, and very heavy, which is great for a desk and for really pushing on it while you're gaming. And the mechanical switches work out both for that as well as for, I mean, for typing fast, all you're doing is increasing your actions per minute while typing. So why not use a gaming keyboard for that to increase your actions per minute while typing? Works out for me, might work out for you, I recommend it, love it so far, it's going to take a while. The The only way a keyboard is going to replace this as my main key keyboard at the moment is if I get one with blue switches. So, 
If that comes up, then it might have a competitor, but for now, favorite keyboard so far. Hope you enjoyed my review, guys. Written review will be in the description below. Product links will be in the description below. Highly recommend you check it out. It's about 100 bucks typically, but that is not bad for a gaming keyboard by any means. That's actually a great price for one. And so, all that in the description below. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you liked it. Leave a comment telling me what you think about this video or the keyboard or what you, if you think um, blue switches would be better for my situation. And I will see y'all later. Bye bye. Thanks for watching Epos and Chew. Let's play together. If you enjoyed the video, consider clicking on the screen to subscribe now. To watch another video, click one of the video annotations on the screen above. Links are also provided to our website, Twitter, and Facebook pages. See you next time.